we are going to move on now to Keir Starmer. And so, James, I'm going to come to you on the tricky issue that he's found himself, or position he's found himself this week over the ceasefire. Where do you think he's gone wrong here? Has he got it right? What's going on? Because, you know, I, I said in the show a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, let's hope Keir Starmer holds the line on the ceasefire. And do you see that weakening? So Keir Starmer's approach to this has been to take the traditional approach of the Labour Party in opposition, which is to tuck in behind the government, which then in turn tucks in behind the US. And he has faithfully carried that out. Now, the reason why he has difficulty is because the overwhelming majority of people in the country don't support that policy. I think there was a YouGov poll, 8% of people oppose a ceasefire. So he is understandably coming under a tremendous amount of pressure because many of his MPs are coming under a tremendous amount of pressure from members of the public. Because the public overwhelmingly wants a ceasefire because it's plain common sense that you don't respond to one set of killings by killing many, many more people. It isn't going to bring about any peace and it is creating... James, there is no war, it is no creating war ever trim where civilians have not, sadly, and just absolutely desperately become, have been, become the victims of that war. We bombed here, us, Britain, I think we, we when the bombing of Dresden, when Dresden was raised during the Second World War, I think we killed what? Was it 1.5 million people, 2 million people? Vi civilians become the, the victims These, of war the and the victims of the, in this case, of the actions of Hamas. So we can't get to they're not They're not the victims of the actions of Hamas. Hamas is not flying the M, the F-16 supplied by the US. No, and they're not. They, they, they crossed the border on, into Israel uh, and murdered and, and dropping, 1,400 people and with dropping, their bare hands. And, and drop, well, not with their bare hands, but they're not dropping... The I'm bombs sorry, with knives on, held in not, their bare they're hands. Not, they're not dropping the bombs on Gaza. We have had nearly 4,000 children killed more than half of the buildings and it's desperate. more than half of the buildings in Gaza have been raised to rubble because Hamas there are is, hiding in those there buildings is, there is, I also think we need to be careful about repeating everything Hamas says in terms yeah. of casualties exactly. far too many people have died far too much destruction has been done but it isn't all about what Hamas's health authority says I'm 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 sorry but I mean you think that these people's names are not real you think Sarah Mohammed Suleiman Al Astal, 17 years old, not real. No, did, James, I, did, Ahmed yeah, Khalid James, did I say that those were not, not real? Casualties. You named, you, you gave a figure of 4,000 and just accepted it was right. That uh, that number comes from Hamas, a terrorist group. You were, you comes... are sceptical about everything Israel does and no, says. I'm sorry. But when Hamas says something, you believe it. No. That's what we're complaining about. We're not saying no one has died. But, Tim, we're all outraged by the Tim, loss but, of innocent but, Tim, life. But, but Tim, I'm sorry, James. You're but, uh, no, 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 we're ganging no. up on you because we're both. Yes, I think... I, and but just please let me make this point because it's really quite important yeah. about the about the deaths, right? The the names of the civilians who have been killed have been released by the health authority in Gaza. Have been identified controlled by Hamas. Oh, please let me finish. Please let me finish the point. But they are controlled by Hamas. Please let me finish the point because, as we're saying, we're talking about dead children. So let me finish the point. But you have to complete let, the point. Oh, you have I, to. I would have done if you hadn't interrupted me on it twice. Now they are being identified by the Israeli-issued identity numbers. This is the, 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 it, it is a unbelievable thing to say that these are not real, that these deaths are made up. And it is, it, it, it is completely wrong. We you, know You that. are now misrepresenting my position. So you can't really complain about other people misrepresenting you when, you when I was absolutely clear, people have clearly died. I'm just questioning the scale and the number of Hamas and I'm, casualties. And I'm, because Hamas are a terrorist group Palestinian that you casualties. seem to give an awful lot more credence pa to than the country of Israel, which is a democracy, Palestine which just has Supreme Court, which has legal process. Hamas intimidates everyone that operates Palest in the Gaza Strip. Palestinian casualties, not Hamas casualties, and they have they have been Hamas named, casualty figures. They have been named and identified by their Israeli issued some of identity have, numbers. Some of those numbers have been recycled. In, so you aren't quoting. So I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to make a point. They are uh, those figures are issued by the Gaza Health Authority, which is controlled by Hamas. That is an important point to make. Well, that's a factual point, yes. And one that you failed to make.
So, what do you mean one that I've... So, no, when you, you said the, is, the figures were issued by the Gaza Health Authority... They are issued by the Gaza Health Authority. The Hamas. Gaza Health Authority... Controlled which... by Hamas. Yes, but when I say... He has the most... Um, it has actually a very impressive propaganda but machine, Nadine, as we saw in the past few days. Nadine, w when I say the Israeli state, I don't say the Likud-led far-right government of the Israeli state. But it's state. very I just different say when you're Israeli talking state. about... No, because the Israeli state is not led by a terrorist organisation. Well, the Israeli state is carrying, is, is carrying out extreme war crimes at so James, present James. And, its, and its leaders have been speaking with genocidal language. So, James... So, it, so, so if we seek truth from facts, let's do that. Though, uh, those are the things let's that are going clear. on. Look, there well, are some... you make your point, but can I just... Do, do, you, do you believe that as a result of Hamas actions, as a result of their actions crossing the border into Israel, and murdering 1,400 people, and you say not with their bare hands, but holding knives and with guns, the most barbaric acts that they committed when they crossed the border. Do you believe that if Israel now, what do you think would happen if Israel were to say now, OK, ceasefire, we are laying down our arms. I'll tell you what would happen. There would be another Holocaust. That's what would happen. No, no, what do you I'm think? Nadine. What do you think Hamas would do if that was the situation? <sighs> Israel has to defend N itself. Nadine. Okay. And do you N think they Nadine, can do that with okay. no casualties? Okay, Nadine, please don't say there'd be another Holocaust because you are conjuring up enormous fears, enormous understandable fears in Jewish people who have that absolute horror, that industrial slaughter, that industrial scale genocide. James, in it's been reported so, they put babies so, in ovens. That's as close to the Holocaust as you can get. It's been reported that Hamas terrorists put Israeli okay, babies in ovens. Okay. We're, and I've I've also seen that somewhere else debunked, but I'm not going to get into the, the get into the specifics of the claim. I'll come back to your central point. What should a statesperson like leader of Israel do in response to the events of the seventh of October? First, they should. Okay, we're going to have to move on because we have to go into the break. So so if you just get because I'm listening to you, I'm I'm not trying to cut you short, but mm -hmm. if you can. So first, they should have reinforced. The uh, the kibbutz in uh, in the Negev bordering Gaza. They part of the reason there are not enough troops there to defend is because they're in the West Bank overseeing the ethnic True. cleansing of Palestinians there. And then the next thing to do is to sue for peace. And I know that sounds extremely difficult after horrible things are done, and it is extremely difficult. But the only long-term solution to this conflict is to end the dispossession of the Palestinian people and to have some form of settlement with all the Palestinian and all the Israeli political, political parties. That would lead to fewer deaths, both Palestinian and Israeli, in the short, medium and long term. James, we've got to go to break, but the two-state solution has been on the table for a very long time. The and people who won't sign up to it are Hamas. Uh, absolute so nonsense. Coming a, up, a historical It would have nonsense. been in play 